And today, I'm not just telling you something that happens in Birds of Prey. I have a lot of information, in fact, right now about how several movies end. And I have not shared that because it would just simply be spoiling the movie. But there's a larger, much larger, important conversation at play here. I'm calling attention to a major change in an established character. LGBT representation, which is very important right now, especially in comic book movies, and this is potentially damaging LGBT representation. Roma has it. Roma has it. Roma has it. She is half your age. So today I want to talk about the rumor of uh, Black Mask being gay and um, a little bit of history on Black Mask. So how I originally heard about this rumor is someone on my Twitter feed retweeted uh, a tweet from a person who was linking uh, this article from a website called Bounding Into Comics. Uh, and Bounding Into Comics was uh, basically talking about the rumor that Black Mask is gay and also linking this rumor to pe uh, pedophilia with apparently, like, honestly, like, I read through their article, and I don't know where they got that from. It's a pretty homophobic article. Um, the source that I quote on this is a movie reviewer named Grace Randolph, who also has written uh, for uh, Justice League Unlimited, like, the comic series, and then she wrote, like, X-Men, like, an X-Men comic. And, um, her tweet says, I'm hearing that Black Mask is indeed not just gay, but flamboyantly gay in the upcoming Birds of Prey movie. And some of the stuff I'm hearing is too crazy to report. You never believe me unless I had actual evidence to point to. Okay, basically it seems, uh, parentheses, and this is the second thing I heard today that I can't believe is true, parentheses, in parentheses, uh, that the plot twist is Black Mask is trying to get back dick pics hidden in a diamond, WTF. Um, and when I initially read this, like, it was kind of upsetting to read, like, you know, first off, like, the Bounding Into Comics, uh, article that was, like, just generally being homophobic. When people are just being kind of, like, bigoted online, especially, like, if it's targeted towards, like, a group that I'm in, it's not that I don't care, it's that I'm not going to waste my time and energy on them. Because, um, like, those, those people, like, you're not really, you're not going to change their mind. And so, I just kind of, whatever, I let it go. And then, like, uh, for the next couple, like, weeks, days, whatever, people started messaging me. Um, like, people that are friends of mine, or, like, we follow each other on social media, or, like, you know, like, their family members that, like, we, I geeked out with and things like that, and they started messaging me, and they would ask me things like, well, what do you think about the rumors? They would say things like, well, I don't want to see, like, a man flirting with another man, you know, like, I don't care if he's gay, I just don't want to see that. I found those comments kind of uncomfortable and really offensive. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, like, I'm someone who's, like, I don't want to say triggered, because people must use that word a lot, but, like, someone who gets offended really easily, but at the same time, like, I personally, I'm bisexual, and, I mean, like, I kind of use the umbrella term of, of gay, of, like, being gay. I've grown up, like, hearing homophobic comments all the time, and honestly, as, like, somebody who's in the LGBT community, like, that takes a really big toll on you. So anyways, I decided to do a little bit of digging. Um, I love deep diving uh, and getting information. And so um, because of people, you know, talking about, like, how making Black Mask gay would be a depart from his character in the comics, I wanted to see if that was really true. Because my only history with Black Mask is seeing him in the end of the Red Hood movie, which I don't really like that movie, and I only saw it once when I was in college. Um, and then also reading him in the Catwoman comics, um, from 2002 to 2008. So, um, we're gonna go, I made a list. So we're gonna go through the list, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of history on Black Mask. 
and I made a spreadsheet <laughs> with every black mask appearance and then I wrote what media was. Um, so all of them are comics except one is a cartoon. And then I wrote, did I, you know, like, did I read it or whatever? I just put consumed. Like, did I consume this media? Yes, I did. Um, I ate it. I put it in my stomach. It's mine now forever. Uh, it made me more powerful. Anyways. Um, and then I put... Uh, does Black Mass basically uh, mention his sexuality? Does he mention a specific sexuality? Does he say specifically, like, I'm not into men or I'm not into, you know, what I, I'm not into women? Um, his first appearance was in um, Batman number 386. Um, I'm fairly sure this was, like, in the 80s. So when he was born, the doctor dropped him on his head, and his parents refused to sue the doctor it wouldn't look good if people found out that their their baby had been dropped on his head when he was born. And so they just never did anything about it. Um, his parents own a cosmetics company. They're really wealthy, and they care very much about, like, outward appearance. Like, so much so that, like, they don't like the Wayne family, but they force, they kind of, like, forcibly hang out with them because it looks good. And this kind of starts, um, Roman, uh, that's his name, Roman's obsession with, like, the idea of masks. Like, he kind of sees, like, his parents and how they behave in public as, like, um, like, them wearing a mask. And, um, and then when he's a kid, they go to, like, his summer home, and his parents, while they don't necessarily, like, really, you know, like, take a personal hand in, like, raising Roman or paying him any attention. Um, they do, um, uh, they don't really allow him to, like, go outside or, like, have any fun or do any, really anything. And so he, um, he sneaks outside, um, of his summer home and he runs to a raccoon, um, which he identifies, like, he calls it, like, a mask creature or whatever with, like, a permanent mask. And... Then the raccoon, like, he tries to get the raccoon to come over to him, and, um, the raccoon bites him. And then, I, like, from what I was understanding, he gets rabies, but, like, he gets the symptoms of, like, rabies immediately after getting bitten, which, um, I'm not a doctor or a nurse, but I'm fairly sure that's not how rabies works. He gets found by his family chauffeur who takes him to the hospital or to the doctor, whatever, I don't know. So now in the comics we see Roman as a grown-up and his parents want to um, bring him into the family cosmetics business um, as CEO and, or eventually to take over as CEO, but they he gets made like vice president or whatever. So he meets a woman who, she's a model and she's auditioning for, um like, to be the new face of the cosmetics brand that they run. He, like, he takes her out on a date, and within, like, four hours of knowing her, he, like, proposes. I think part of, like, why, why he liked her is because she, whenever they meet, she says, oh, I go by Cersei, but my real name is, and we never hear what her real name is, but um, he just calls her Cersei. Like, he never calls her by her real name. And, again, to him, like, that has to do with the theme of masks. He tells his parents, but his parents are like, no son of mine is going to marry a model. That looks terrible. And so they force him to break up with her, or so they think. And Roman and her plot, basically, to murder his parents, and his parents mysteriously die in a fire. Then he goes to the cosmetics company that he's in charge of now, and he basically kicks out their PR department, of their office, because he's like, it's a big office, and he's like, turn that into an apartment for me, and they're like, yes sir, Mr. Simon, sir, or whatever. So him and Cersei move into that, that apartment, and then he tries to, to start, like, a, um, a new line of cosmetics, like, he pulls all their regular line of, like, just regular makeups and stuff, and he starts trying to sell a brand of, like, brightly colored makeup that's like, it's like David Bowie's baby. <laughs> Uh, that fails, and his board is like, we need to put all of our, 
our regular, you know, our, like, our line of makeup. And he sees, like, the failure of the David Bowie product of, as him, like, losing face. And so he goes to, like, their R&D department, and he's like, I'll give, you know, like, I don't remember how much he said. I want to say 100000 But he's like, I'll give a whole bunch of money to the guy who invents, like, the next big makeup thing or whatever. And so what they come up with is um, a line of makeup that, like, it, it's basically like a mask on your face. It doesn't wash off in water or anything. I don't know how you'd get it off your face. That was kind of, like, my question while I was reading. And without, like, product testing or, like, making or clearing it with, like, the FDA or anything or, like, any government agencies, he, uh... <laughs> He puts this on the shelf. He, like, puts this makeup out. And, of course, like, shit hits the fan because the makeup, it turns out that it's toxic and that it'll, like, horribly disfigure you if you use it. And so his company suffers a bunch of profit losses and also they get hit with a lot of lawsuits. And so basically, like, the company's going under and he sees that again, of, as him, like, losing face, and, um, and then Bruce Wayne, uh, Wayne Andrews comes in, and they're like, we're gonna buy your company, but Roman, you can stay on, but you're just kind of a figurehead, like, we'll have a board of directors run the company, and he's like, we're doing this as, like, a favor, because, you know, like, my family was friends with your family, and, uh, Roman again sees that as, um, him, uh, losing face. He goes downstairs to find that, like, Cersei is packing all of her stuff in their apartment, and he's, like, he tries to convince her to stay, and she, you know, she's like, no, I'm not gonna stay, or whatever, like, I mean, we're pretty much done, and so, like, she leaves, but, like, whenever she leaves, because their apartment is inside of his company building, all of his employees see it, and so, like, Again, that's him losing face, and so he kind of, like, loses it, like, he goes berserk, and he has, like, obviously, like, a mental breakdown. He goes to, like, his family crypt, or crypt, um, mausoleum, whatever it's called, and he, like, um, he gets struck by lightning while he's trying to open the gate, and... It knocks him out for a second, but then he wakes up, and he wakes up pissed off that it didn't kill him. It, like, he's like, oh, I can't believe I'm not dead. And, like, he starts, like, throwing a tantrum, and he loses it so much that, like, he basically, like, a part of his father's coffin, like, comes off in his hand, and he, like, carves a mask out of it. It's like this black wood, and then that's where he, like, gets the black, black mask from. But anyways, um, so, like... He starts running this game called the False Face Society, and he has, like, this big collection of mask masks that he built, like, while he was uh, wealthy. Like, that was kind of his hobby, like, collecting masks from, like, around the world in different cultures and stuff. And so he makes each member of the False Face Society, like, uh, he makes them, like, pick a mask from their collection or whatever, and that's their new face. Um, he even at one point, like, kidnaps Cersei, and he, like, hor like, he horribly disfigures her and forces her to wear a mask, and then he kind of, like, just keeps her around, but she doesn't actually participate in, like, any other criminal activity. It, like, does, I don't know, they do a bunch of crimes, and he murders a bunch of people, and then, like, Batman confronts him, and Roman, like, sets a fire, because he's like, oh my god, I've been wearing a mask this whole time, but he's not talking about, like, the physical mask that he's wearing. He's talking about, like, a figurative mask. Uh, the mask of, like, Roman Sinus. I'm just gonna call him Roman <laughs> Black Mask feels like he has to kill off Roman in order for him to, uh, truly be able to, like, be a, his real self, which is Black Mask. Roman's mask is, like, attached to his face from, like, that makeup compound from before that, like, disfigured people. And so, like, the the fire mixed with, like, the, the mask and the heat and the makeup and everything and the chemicals, it fuses the mask to his face. So now that's his real face. That's 
that's basically the birth of Black Mask. I wrote here, um, Batman number 386, does he mention his sexuality? No, but he is engaged to a woman. Detective Comics number 553, uh, does he mention his sexuality? No, but he kidnaps his ex fiance and disfigures her like we just talked about. Um, Batman number 387, does he mention it? No. Batman number 400, no. Batman number 484, no. But he does kidnap his ex fiance again, who is homeless. Like, he goes, he sends thugs to, like, go retrieve her or whatever from the streets, and they force her to come with them. And he forces her to dress up in, like, a costume or whatever. Um, Batman number 45, no. Batman 486, no. Uh, Batman 494, no. Batman number 518, no. But he does have his ex fiance imprisoned in his gang hideout. Um, <laughs> Detective Comics number 684, no. Uh, Detective Comics number 697, no. He does kiss a woman, but it actually turns out that Black Mask is not Roman this time. It's Dr. Arkham as Roman. Uh, Let's see, Batman Bullock's Law, no. Uh, no Man's Land, no. Uh, Catwoman, 2002-2008, no. But I will note here that he does, in this comic series, he 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 kind of acts like the main villain uh, for Catwoman. And that's why, like, when I heard that they were doing, originally, like, when, they, when I heard they were doing, like, a Gotham City Sirens movie, or whatever, and I heard that Black Mask is going to be the villain, I was really excited, because Black Mask and Catwoman, I feel like, have a pretty intertwined history. Um, but in the Catwoman comics, he um, he kidnaps Catwoman's best friend, Holly Robinson, and he kidnaps Catwoman's sister, Maggie Kyle, and Catwoman's brother-in-law, Maggie's husband, Simon. He tortures Simon. He tortures and kills Simon in front of Maggie. And then he does something really gross, which I won't say. Honestly, the first time I read it, it was probably one of the most disgusting things I've ever read. Uh, just really disturbing. He traumatizes Maggie so much that, like, she can't talk anymore. Um... Like, whenever she talks, it's just gibberish, and she doesn't respond to anyone or anything. Like, he basically, I mean, drives her insane. He was, like, on the edge of, like, the balcony, and he was about to fall, and he was like, save me! And Catwoman was like, um, no. And then he falls, but he's not really dead. He was comic books. Nobody ever really dies. So later in the Catwoman series, like, she shoots him, and, um, it's probably one of my favorite scenes of all time, because, like, he starts trying to give that whole speech of, like, you won't shoot me, I know you. And when he says, you won't shoot me, I know you, she shoots him. And she says, not anymore, you don't. And I was always like... <laughs> Back to the list. Uh, War Games. No. He does say Stephanie Brown, who uh, is the spoiler and was Robin at one point and was Batgirl later on, and then everything got rebooted, blah, 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 blah. That's for those of you who don't know. He doesn't mention a specific sexuality, but he says Stephanie Brown is pretty and accuses Batman, or he basically jests that Batman just keep, keeps her around to keep the troop ha troops happy, basically asserting that, like, uh, that Batman just keeps her around so the Robins can uh, gangbanger, I guess. Because he thinks that she's too useless for for anything else. And I do want to add here that Stephanie is a teenage girl that he's saying this to. Um, and then he talks to her like they're romantically involved. Um, again, this is a teenage girl who he spent hours painfully torturing. Um, he calls what they have romance and says that she ruined it right before killing her. Um, and then he says that he wants to puke on Babs, a.k.a. Oracle. Instead of forming anything ro romantic between the two of them. But no, he never specifically says that he's not gay or bisexual or pan. Um, <laughs> that comic was really disturbing to read. For anyone who's never read War Games, I suggest that you don't. Let's see, Under the under the Hood, Under the Red Hood, uh, does he mention a sexuality? No, 
but he does, and I feel like he is um, flirting with uh, his personal assistant named Daniel. They do talk to each other uh, like they're married. Um, I'll read a few things for you now. So in Under the Red Hood, uh, it's about Jason Todd coming back from the dead and confronting Batman. But a big part of it is him trying to get at Black Mask. Him and his assistant have just gone to visit Dr. Freeze. His assistant Daniel says, Yes, well, Freeze tends to blast out of the tent, in the tent, on himself, and on anyone within range. I'm not thrilled about employing psychotics. And uh, Roman says, When in Rome? Uh, Daniel says, By the way, I've gotten some more dirt on the new player. Roman says, Yes. And Daniel says, He's calling himself the Red Hood. Uh, Black Mask says, Very nostalgic. Daniel says, are you worried? Black Mask says, no, that's what I have you for. Uh, and besides, I'm slightly ahead of your intel. Uh, then they come in with, like, news about Freeze. David says, this won't end well. And uh, Black Mask said, of course not. He's a problem, but he's not our problem. Um, and then there's another um, kind of scene further down where um, Red Hood has bombed uh black mass uh office like his penthouse and um black mass asks daniel how did you get out daniel says i ran after you black mass says you're quick and daniel says i take a spinning class three times a week and black mass says it works for you and daniel says no kidding well I'm, uh smirking so i don't know I kind of read that as flirting. You maybe interpret it different, but to me, that's how it came off. Blackest Knight, uh, no, but he does come back to life. He tries to kill Maggie and Catwoman, and then Ivy traps him in a giant plant. I just thought that was funny. Detective Comics Scare Tactics, no. Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Dark Trinity. Uh, uh, while he doesn't mention a specific sexuality, he, there is evidence that he could be asexual because he says that he was never really interested in dating. In the comic, he does wear a BDSM mask <laughs> for a duration of it, like in that series. And then he reveals like his real face, which is the, the black mask face. And he also makes his, um, his henchmen wear a BDSM mask. I just thought that was very funny. Um, the Bat, number three, The Last Arkham. No, he doesn't mention a specific sexuality. The Batman Strikes, number 39. Uh, no, The Batman Strikes, number 47. No, uh, Batman, Brave and the Bold. No, he does not. So everyone's saying that if Black Mask were to be gay in the Birds of Prey movie, it would be a really big, like, depart from the comics, and it would be a really big change in his character, but I, I feel like there's more evidence to suggest that it really wouldn't be that big of a change. Um, if anything, like, I would say there's more evidence that he's asexual, um, in the comics than he is, like, straight. And again, like, I'm not saying that he can't be, like, bisexual or pansexual. I really don't feel like it's, it's that big of, like, a change in the character as, like, everyone's complaining about. Basically, in summary, you know, like, it's fine if you don't see Bla Black Mask as, um, as gay. Um, but I don't think it's really, like that far of a stretch for him to like be gay in the movie if you don't like it then like just don't go see the movie like and also like don't message like people that you know especially people that you know are like gay and be like oh what do you think about this ew men kissing ew a penis i want to see that like just don't do that but overall i think it's key to remember that like we've only seen like a 30 second trailer of the movie we haven't seen, like, a longer trailer that gives us more information. Like, currently they're doing, uh, like, some reshoots for, like, the fight scenes and stuff. And, like, very few people have seen the actual movie. And the few people that have, like, they've done some early test screenings for, like, certain crowds. And they've had nothing but rave reviews about it. Um, the only, the only people that had anything, like, negative to say was, like, DC execs. Because they were like, oh... I don't know if, you know, this is right for our brand, but, like, we all know DC execs are a bunch of cowards. But I, I just think it's key to remember that, like, 
this is a rumor started by a woman whose goal is to create controversy and uh, give you clickbait titles so you go to her videos and, like, you, you watch her videos and you listen to what she has to say. And um, she's also, like, while I was, like, researching all of this, I also found that a lot of times, like, she's often wrong in, like, her predictions and stuff. So, again, it's just a rumor. Like, you don't need to get, you know, all bent out of shape over something that's probably not even true. And that's all I have to say about it. So, I want to thank everyone um, for being here and being on my channel and watching um, my videos. I'm wanting to make a lot more of them. Um, I'm, I currently, I was on long-term disability. I lost my disability, but I can't work. <laughs> Um, I suffer from really severe agoraphobia. Um, I don't like to leave my house is basically what that means. Um, and so it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would um, check out my, my, co my coffee um, page and consider donating to it. Um, I've considered doing a Patreon, but I don't know anything about Patreon. So if you know something about Patreon, feel free to message me on Twitter, uh, hit me up, and, um, yeah, anyways, so I hope you all have a good day, I hope you enjoy this video, like and subscribe, and just stay frosty, everyone. Because it's about Luke Skywalker and a lack of balance in characters plus black audiences don't watch Star Wars because of the tokenism of Finn. Nothing to do with what you said. Hashtag Golden Globes um hashtag Time's Up movement isn't just about wearing a black dress doesn't this just fly in the face of what everyone's trying to say tonight? Absolutely tragic that hashtag Carrie Fisher passed away at just 60 will be missed. And hopefully serve as a warning we drugs and alcohol addiction. Thank <laughs> you.